All right, let me share my screen. Okay, um, so what we got going on um, the rest of this week is uh, chapter six um, and part of chapter seven. Um, we're gonna get into some uh, a little more sophisticated uh, CSS uh, layout uh, techniques um, uh, for our for our page layouts. And then um, as we get to week seven, uh, we're going to get into responsive design and designing for uh, different screen sizes. Okay, so today I'm going to go over information from chapter six. And um, then Friday, uh, we're going to get started. I'm going to start going through the uh, practice activities with you guys on zoom. Okay, so we'll do that on Friday and then probably finish that up on Monday of next week. All right, so you have um, that class activity, so our practice activities, and then the case study for chapter six and a couple of quizzes uh, that are due in about a week and a half on October 4th. Um, the one thing that is due uh, by the end of this week is for your final project, okay? Um, the first step is you're gonna pick out your, um, your topic, okay? So um, you're gonna decide what your website is gonna be about, um, right? So there's a couple of um, pages here, a couple of documents for you to download. Um, the, the first one is kind of just help you generate some ideas, okay? So you can use that, you can fill it out by hand or you can uh, type in it. And then um, the, uh, the second piece there is I want you to uh, type up a proposal um, using the uh, document here for the rubric. Uh, rubric is also uh, right there. And I want you to um, kind of basically what it does is that you're creating an outline for your website. Okay, so uh, what's it going to be about? What are the goals? Um, who, who's the target audience? Um, what opportunities um, or issues is your website going to address? And uh, what kind of content is going to be in your site? Uh, maybe some uh, give give some examples of some other websites that are out there that you like that um, you might use as a uh, reference or inspiration for your site. Um, okay, so uh, that's kind of what you're going to do is your first step for your final project. Uh, you're going to develop this uh, topic approval. Okay, and so that'll be due by the end of this week um, on Sunday. All right, let me go back to the modules here. Okay, um, and then like I said, the, the rest of the stuff here, uh, we'll keep working on uh, through the rest of this week and next week. Um, I will get, so I apologize for not getting the stuff graded because um, I was out sick uh, at the end of last week and um, over the weekend and Monday. So um, I will get all of that stuff um, graded uh, before the mid, mid semester here. Um, so you can see where you're standing as far as your uh, midterm grade. So I will have all of that stuff uh, updated this week. If you're still missing, uh, if you haven't turned in assignments for previous chapters, uh, you still have time to do that, uh, get those done and turned in. Okay, so uh, that way you'll have a better idea of what your uh, grade is um, going into the mid semester. Okay. So um, get those turned in. And I think that's about it. Um, so we'll, uh, today we're gonna get going on um, chapter six from the book. Okay, so we're gonna talk about some uh, different CSS techniques for um, creating our, some layout ideas for our pages. All right, let's go to, Share this one, switch screens here. Uh, actually, hold on, sorry. I got a different office set up that got set up yesterday. So I'm trying to get dual monitors and stuff going on. So I think this will work better. All right, let's go to slideshow. Okay, 
All right. Um, so we're going to talk about page layout. <clears throat> and that's what chapter six covers. Um, so our objectives here, um, we're going to talk about the CSS box model. Okay, so it's, a, it's an important concept. Uh, we're going to talk about configuring margins uh, with CSS. We're going to talk about what a float means uh, when we do float techniques. Uh, talk about fixed relative and absolute positioning. Um, then we'll talk about some uh, two-page layout uh, concepts, um, some navigation uh, using CSS, right? Uh, then we'll talk about what we call pseudo classes. Okay, so this is just adds some different interactivity to our to our hyperlinks, and then uh, some HTML5 issues. All right, and the first thing, box model. Okay, this is really important um, to kind of figure out what this what this concept means uh, and to understand um, how to use this in web design. Okay, so the, the illustration there on the right, um, with the way I usually do it, I kind of start in the center and then I move out um, from there. Okay, so we start with our content, okay, of our web page. Um, this is our the text and um, graphics, uh, all of those different um, pieces, uh, elements of our, of our page that are usually put inside of a container, uh, a div container. Um, <clears throat> moving out from that, we usually have some uh, padding, okay? We apply some padding around that content. Um, and then we have, from there, we have our border, okay? So this is the um, area between uh, the padding of that content and then the uh, margins, um, outside margins of our pages. And then at the very edge, um, so you can think of this kind of the very edge of the browser, um, we have our margins, which uh, determine that empty space uh, between the elements and uh, any adjacent elements, okay? So uh, this is a good illustration to look over, uh, to kind of memorize and understand how, that, how that's working, okay? Um, <clears throat> right, so when we do a margin, when we configure our margins uh, with CSS, um, again, we can do margin top, margin right, left, bottom, okay? Um, we're configuring empty space between the element and the, any adjacent elements, all right? So some examples there, uh, the syntax uh, from the code. Um, the first one there, okay, so we're applying a margin around our H1 element, okay, so our H1 heading. Um, first one there, we have zero, so we're putting no margin basically around all four sides of that H1, okay? And then um, we have uh, the next one there where we would have 20 pixels on the top and bottom and then 10 pixels on the left and right, okay? Um, and then so on, um, kind of how we, we did that, uh, where we think clockwise, so remember we go clockwise. So uh, the bottom example there, we start with 20 pixels on the top uh, 30 pixels right, zero on the bottom, and then 30 pixels on the left, okay? So there's different ways that you can code the syntax for, for those margins. Um, padding, same, same exact way we do margins, okay? But remember, padding is um, that area right around the, um, the content, okay? Um, the... Uh, the padding, um, again, same thing we can do left, top, right, bottom. Uh, we can have the same values for all those, um, or we can have different values for um, all four sides, okay? So when we do some of our examples, you'll see how this uh, padding and margins work um, with the, the different elements, okay? All right, so here's an example of how this box model works, all right? So uh, let's start with the, our H1 there. Um, we have our content, okay, right? Examples of the box model, that text, okay? Then we have our padding, uh, which is that kind of light blue area um, that's around all the text, okay? So we have, it uh, looks like we have a lot bigger padding on the right side um, versus the, the left side. Um, 
outside of that padding, then we have our border. Okay, so we have a black border um, around that uh, padding area. And then outside of that, then we have our margin, right? We have the, the, the empty space, okay? And then same thing there with the, uh, the paragraph element, right? Or that div element that we have configured. Uh, we have our content. Um, we have basically no padding set up for this one, right? And we can kind of tell that by the way the text is um, aligning almost right next to the uh, border. Okay, it's um, right flush up to that border. And then we have, uh, we do have some margins set up around that, that div. Okay, so again, if you just think of that kind of moving from the inside out, um, that's how that box model works. Right, um, so box, uh, CSS box sizing property, right? So um, the default value for the width or height um, is the value for only the content, okay? Not the border or the padding. Um, the box sizing property, it's used um, as a selector to direct the browser to kind of calculate that width and height of an element um, to incorporate the values, uh, the value for the content padding and the border. All right, so um, this little piece of syntax here is something that you're going to include from now on, usually on all of your uh, pages, or your uh, the, uh, when you're when you're working like on your case studies and things like that. Um, we're going to use this line here, and that uh, the little asterisks um, that we put before there. Um, that's what we call a universal selector. So it is going to um, apply that to all the different elements um, on your page. Okay, so. That little piece of code um, we'll use on pretty much everything from now on. All right, so when we talk about how the, the page flows um, when the browser is um, displaying the content, um, really they're they're displayed in the order in which they're coded on the on the document. Okay, so the, the example there on the the left, um, we have our first box of content. Um, so it's going to display to the top and left, and then we have our second box, which is going to go under that. Um, and then we have on the right, uh, an inner and an outer box. Okay, so that outer box is um, going to be displayed first, and then the inner box is going to be uh, displayed on top of that. All right, and so we'll, we'll do some coding examples to um, to be able to do some of these flow different ways that the content flows uh, to get that kind of overlay effect. Um, so part of that is um, by how we use the float property. Okay, so when we talk about float, um, that's when the elements on the page seem to uh, either float to the right or to the left side of the browser. Um, so the, the way we do this, uh, okay, so we have an example here. Um, we have that, uh, um, we have an H1, okay, we have a paragraph, and then we have that, uh, that picture, right? Uh, we have that picture of the um, that little flower, okay? So we start off with our H1, we have our background color, our padding, uh, text color. Okay, and then we go down to our paragraph um, and then we have a style set up for our font family. Um, and then we have an ID selector. Okay, so this is what, um, is, is what we're applying to that, uh, to that picture. Okay, we're telling it to, uh, for, for that ID selector, we're telling it to float right. Okay, so it's gonna go to the right side of the browser. And we are setting up some margins, okay? So um, zero on the top and bottom, uh, and then five pixels on the left and right. Um, and then for our border, it's a one pixel solid uh, black border uh, that we're putting around that photo. Um, but if we didn't use the float property, uh, that uh, picture would just be flush left and directly under that text, okay? Because uh, the browser is just going to display that uh, how it typically would. 
Um, sometimes we want to use um, what we call a clear property um, because we want to um, basically get rid of a float um, for something. Okay. So the example here, we have this H2 text um, that is going to be displayed. Um, it's basically going to wrap itself around that um, the photo. Okay. So it kind of looks ugly and looks a little jagged, right? So we want to look a little cleaner. So what we could do uh, to the, uh, for the styling for that H2 is we're telling it to clear left. Okay. So what it's going to do is it's going to clear the float um, to the left of that text. And then, so by doing that, what it does then is it just, um, that H2 text displays right after the uh, code for that floated image. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't have any code on here to show you how that works, but um, we will do this uh, when we do our practice activities. Okay, so uh, once you once we get into the code and actually do that, it, it's probably going to make a little more sense. Um, but th the main thing to remember with a clear is that we're um, basically overriding that float, um, so we can kind of move the text uh, to the area that's directly after the the floated image. All right, um, another uh, idea here we have is overflow property. Okay, so this is intended to configure uh, the display of the elements on the page. Um, so, uh, but it's useful to clear those floats before the end of a container element. Okay. Um, okay, so like here we got uh, on the left side, we wanted that, uh, we wanted to have kind of a yellowish background behind that text. Okay, so the, that area um, to the right of the photo. Um, but what it's doing is it's just um, staying contained right behind the text. Okay, it's, it's not uh, taking up the whole space. So to get this to look better, uh, we want to have that uh, yellow text, or I mean the yellow background color uh, extend all the way to the top and bottom of that um, picture uh, that we're floating, okay? So if we use um, an overflow uh, setting and set the value to auto, and if uh, we apply that to that div uh, that the photo and that text is in, uh, that background is going to extend um, all the way um, from the H2 text um, to the floated image. All right, because visually that's just going to look a lot better because um, we have some nice consistency. All right, so again, we'll we'll do this uh, in the coding examples, and it's going to it's going to make sense once you start um, coding that yourselves. All right, um, so some of our display properties uh, we use the we use these to um, tell how tell the browser how certain elements are um, displayed. Okay, so uh, if we use display none, it's basically going to hide that element. All right. So there's times when, uh, for example, when we get in chapter seven, when we're working with responsive screen designs, uh, there might be certain elements that we don't want to show on the phone that maybe take up too much space, or maybe it's a, <clears throat> a photo or something that we don't need on the, on the browser, um, the phone browser screen. So um, we can apply those uh, display none properties uh, to those different elements so that they don't show up. Um, display block, uh, that the, the element when you're, when you're doing this, the element is rendered as a block element. Um, even if it's actually an inline element like a hyperlink. Okay. Okay. Um, then we have a couple other ones. Uh, we have display inline. All right. So the element will be rendered as an inline element, um, even if it's a block element. Okay, so um, these are helpful for uh, like list items. Okay, um, like if you if we wanted to do a, a horizontal nav. 
okay? We could uh, display that nav and those list items as inline, okay? And they'll just um, kind of be rendered straight across the, the page. Uh, and then there's also inline block. Um, the element will display as a inline display element that's adjacent to uh, any other in, inline display elements. Uh, but you can also uh, configure it with uh, different properties of a, of a block display like uh, width and height. Okay. Again, we'll, we'll do this in the, in the coding activities. And uh, once you do some hands-on work with this, it'll, it'll make sense. Okay, so uh, page layout. Um, there's different ways to do this uh, when you're working on your page designs. Um, the example there on the left is a single column uh, wireframe, right? So we have our wrapper. Um, we'll usually set up an ID selector for that. Um, and then we have the header, nav, main, and the footer, okay? It's all in one single column. Uh, this works great for uh, mobile design for on the phone, uh, phone screens, all right? Uh, the two column setup here. Again, we have our wrapper. Um, usually you'll have the header that extends all the way across the width, um, but then you might have a nav that's set up in a vertical orientation with the main content uh, to the right of it. Okay, this works really well for um, like a, uh, maybe more of a tablet view or uh, your typical uh, computer desktop view for the, the browser. Um, and so the way we would do this, um, so we're, we're thinking about the structure of the page, right? Um, we have our body element there. Uh, then we have an ID selector set up for wrapper. Okay, so we're putting all of that header, nav, footer, main uh, content inside of that wrapper. And then we have our header, our nav, the main, and the footer. Okay, so we kind of did this um, previously where we're working with the different elements of, of the page. All right, but how do we get it to um, give us that vertical orientation for the nav? Okay, so we can do that with the CSS. All right, so we have our typical uh, wrapper uh, ID selector there set up with 80% left and right uh, values uh, for the margin set to auto, so it centers it. Uh, we got a header or H1. Um, but when we do our nav, okay, so, so look here, now we're using that float uh, property. Okay, so we're telling the nav, instead of going horizontal across the, uh, the width of that wrapper, um, we're telling that nav to float to the left side of that wrapper. And we're also telling it we only want it to be 90 pixels wide um, with 10 uh, pixels of padding around those uh, links. Okay, so it's gonna look uh, like the example there on the right where it's 90 pixels wide uh, we're floating that to the left and we're giving a little bit of padding. Uh, by doing that though, then we also need to um, set up a little bit of a margin for our main. Okay, so we're gonna do a margin left of 100 pixels, okay, to give a little bit of breathing room between that content and the, the nav. Uh, we're also gonna put in some padding, okay, to give it a little bit of uh, content or a little bit of uh, space between our content. Um, and then the rest of it's pretty standard, right? We have our footer and all that uh, like we normally would do. Okay, so um, if we're looking at um, another uh, option here, uh, we can have that nav, maybe that uh, takes up the entire uh, height of the wrapper. Uh, then we might have our main, um, content in there with the header and the footer. Okay, so um, let's take a look. So there's an example of that there on the right. Okay, and we'll do some coding activities um, specifically working with like that example. Um, so to get that um, vertical nav, um, we just set it up as a list item, right? Um, so we've done our list items before, our unordered list. 
Okay. Um, but we don't, remember, we, do, we don't want to get those um, the bullets on there. Okay. And usually we don't want to put the underlying text on there. Um, typically, that's just kind of a, uh, kind of a design standard. Um, so in our CSS, remember, we want to um, use our nav UL, uh, put our list style type as none. Okay, so that's going to get rid of our, our bullets. And we're also going to do our uh, nav uh, anchor um, values and set the text decoration to none. Okay, so remember that gets rid of our, our underlines for those links. Okay. Um, but what if we what if we want that nav to go horizontal, right? We want it to go um, horizontally from one side to the other uh, in our nav area. Okay, so here's where we're gonna work with that display uh, inline. Okay, so again, we're doing our nav UL set that to none, uh, the anchor text decoration none, <clears throat> but also uh, with that. Uh, anchor nav uh, style, we're gonna add some padding to the right of that text, about 10 pixels. And the reason being we want kind of a 10 pixel space in between our links. And then what we're gonna add then to get that horizontal nav is we're gonna do a nav li style for that list, those list items in the nav. And we're gonna set those to display uh, inline. All right, so that's going to make them go horizontally across our, our nav area instead of vertically. All right, so that's how we how we use that display inline property. All right, uh, pseudo classes. Okay, so uh, these are how we can get a little more act, uh, interactivity um, within our CSS uh, anchor elements. Okay. So like we want to create like some rollover effects, uh, like when you move the cursor over uh, a link, uh, maybe it'll change color or uh, get bolder, something like that. Um, so we can, we can do that with uh, what we call pseudo classes. All right, so um, there's basically five different pseudo classes for uh, anchor element. Um, we have our anchor link. Okay, so the first one on there, um, on the right, um, on the right side example there, uh, that's just our default uh, color value uh, for that link. Uh, then we have an anchor uh, visited. Okay, so if we wanted that link color to change after we've the users visited that uh, site or that page, um, we can set it to change colors. Um, focus. Okay, so that is a uh, what that's what happens when um, that hyperlink um, has a focus. Okay, um, it's basically like right when you hover over it. Um, and you don't have to include all of these. Uh, if you only wanted to include a link visited um, and hover, you can do that. Uh, you don't have to have all four uh, five of these. Um, hover, uh, that's when you move that mouse uh, directly over that link and keep it on there. Uh, you could have it change color. Or um, active is when um, that second, right when the, uh, the link is being clicked on. Okay. Uh, and we can also do, um, so say we wanted, um, these uh, to, to look different, um, like when we uh, have a, a, a button or some kind of a, an action that we want the user to do. Um, okay, we could just use, we could just use the, like I said, the, the two, um, the two pseudo classes there. Uh, we could just do a link um, and we could leave it underlined um, as kind of the default, right? So uh, we could still have that underline on there if we wanted, uh, but then we could make it change to um, get rid of that underline when we hover over it, okay? 
So there's a lot of flexibility with these pseudo classes. Uh, it just you can kind of customize it to whatever you think looks best with with your web page. Um, all right, so uh, header text image replacement. Um, so this is useful when um, maybe you want uh, like a you want to use a certain font or something in your header or the logo uh, that doesn't really maybe that it's a different font that isn't really displayed on browsers. Um, maybe most people don't have that font installed on their computers. Okay, um, so you can. Uh, set up a, a text image replacement, okay? So basically what this is gonna do is um, like uh, if they don't have that, it's gonna pull up basically some like replacement text, okay, for that image, all right? So let's just look here. Um, so we have our H1 um, and then we have uh, text indent, at 100%, all right, and we have white space set to no wrap and the overflow is hidden, okay? So what this is gonna do is um, somebody that's loading up uh, this, this header, uh, this H1, um, normally is gonna see um, the Lighthouse Island Bistro there, um, but if they don't have that, um, we have some hidden um, text that we have kind of behind the scenes uh, that will show up um, if that uh, property isn't displayed on the on the browser. Okay, so it's kind of hard to explain um, just doing this via PowerPoint. Um, again, we'll do some coding activities where we actually see this in kind of live uh, practice. Okay, so. So when we code this um, and see it actually work, it's, it's gonna make a lot more sense to you guys. Um, all right, so okay, we're moving right through. We got a lot of information. Um, so um, I'll, I'll have all these slides put on Canvas for you guys to review. Because I know, I know there's a lot of information that's being presented, so. Um, don't worry if you don't get it all the first time. Um, we'll have a lot of chance to come back and, and review all this. Um, so position property, uh, we have uh, a few different uh, options here. So uh, now we're talking about how we're gonna position uh, certain elements uh, within the browser window, okay? Uh, we have static, uh, which is just the default value um, where the elements kind of just rendered in the normal flow of whatever the browser does. Uh, there's a fixed value property um, where we kind of glue it, basically we glue it to the browser in a certain place and it doesn't move, okay? Uh, even when that page is uh, being scrolled up and down, uh, that, that element doesn't move. Uh, there's relative um, that configures the location of an element to, rel to be relevant or relative to where um, it would, uh, normally render out uh, on the screen, all right? And then there's absolute um, value uh, where we precisely configure the location of an element outside of the normal flow. Okay, so some examples here. Um, we have our nav, okay, in a fixed position, okay? So if we, if we set those nav uh, items up uh, for that vertical nav, and we told it to use the fixed position. Um, even when you scroll through the browser, uh, you scroll through the content there on that page, those um, nav links are gonna be in the exact same position no matter where you, where you scroll, okay? So this would be helpful uh, maybe if you, if you had a really uh, long page that had a lot of content in, on it because um, you could easily then uh, move to other links um, within that page without having to scroll all the way back up to the top. Okay, so you could use that uh, fixed position for something like that, all right? Because if you look at the two, uh, the two screenshots there, uh, that home menu directions and contact 
are in the exact same position on both of those browsers. All right, um, relative positioning uh, that changes uh, location of element of a uh, element in relation to where it um, otherwise would appear in the normal flow. Okay, so um, paragraph. Uh, so it'd be useful for a paragraph because maybe we want to um, move it left uh, 30 pixels. Okay, um, to give it kind of an indented look. All right, so if we use the position relative and left 30 pixels, um, we can kind of get that indented uh, look to the text there. Um, absolute positioning. Okay, so this is where if we want our text or whatever element we have to be in an exact um, position. Um, all right, so if we use position absolute on this example, and we say left 200 pixels and top 100 pixels. Um, it's going to move us over um, 200 pixels from the left, and it's going to move us down 100 pixels from the top, and uh, 300 pixels wide. Okay, so we're telling that um, paragraph to be 300 pixels wide. Um, okay, this is just a kind of a, re, a reminder um, to use that uh, CSS validator uh, website to check any kind of syntax errors that you might have in your in your CSS. Okay, especially when we're working with positioning and, and layout and that type of stuff. Okay. All right, so the last few slides here, um, I'm going to talk about HTML5 uh, structural elements. Okay, uh, we have our header element. Um, okay, so we got basically I got four different elements I'm going to show you here and then an uh, example of um, what those look like on the page. Uh, so we have head, header element with a block display uh, contains the headings um, of either a web page document or area um, in the documents that might have a section or an article. Uh, then we have our nav element. Um, also block display uh, main element. Okay, so we're, we're using block display on all of these uh, different ones, okay? So um, if we have those set up as block display on all these, this is kind of how it's gonna look, right? So that screenshot there. Um, some other elements, so those are our main ones that we're gonna, that we're always gonna use, okay? For, for the structure of our pages, the header, the nav, the main and the footer. Okay, so we're always going to want to have those four. Uh, but there's some other elements that we might want to uh, insert in our pages. Um, like we could use uh, a side. Okay, so uh, if we look at this page here, uh, maybe we want something um, like a, uh, a little sidebar or something in there. Okay, to the right, uh, we could use a side element. Okay, it could be uh, like a sidebar or a little, uh, they call it a note, okay. Uh, there's a section element, okay. So this um, is another element we could uh, have. Uh, an article element, okay. So article element could uh, maybe contain an independent entry like a, a blog posting. Um, we could bring in uh, Twitter feeds, um, Instagram uh, photos, something like that, uh, we could set up using an article element, okay? Um, another one is a time element. So if we wanted the, uh, use like some time stamping um, on different things, uh, we could use the time element. So when something's updated, uh, time stamps that page, okay? So this is again, good for if you got information that's changing a lot, uh, you can use that time element. All right, and then um, the uh, something to also think about. Um, we'll usually want to add this little bit of syntax in um, because sometimes the older browsers uh, won't configure this stuff correctly. Okay, so if people are using older versions of Internet Explorer, or something like that. Um, we want to make sure that the, the information is displayed properly. So 
um, we would just insert this little bit of syntax into the CSS uh, where we have header, main, nav, footer, uh, basically any of our, our elements there that are regarding the, the layout, uh, we'll set those to display block, okay? Um, okay, and then just uh, one last thing here on deciding to configure a class or ID. Okay, we'll want to convert, we'll want to use the class selector uh, if that style is going to be applied to more than one element, right? So remember, if we're doing a class selector in our CSS, uh, we're gonna we're gonna use that in uh, multiple areas on the page. Um, but if we use an ID selector, um, we're gonna use that when we're only applying that to just one uh, specific element um, on the page. Okay. And remember, we use the, the hashtag um, before the name of the ID selector, and we use a dot or a period in front of the name of the style sheet for, for a class selector. Okay. All right, that is it. So, again, um, a lot of information. Uh, I'll have the I'll have these slides posted on. Um, I'll have these slides posted on Canvas for you guys to review. Uh, all this information is in the book in chapter six, so uh, take a look at that. Um, but again, um, Friday, uh, I'd like everybody to get on Zoom on Friday, and we're going to uh, start with the hands-on activities for chapter six and start coding some of this stuff that we talked about. And, uh, and then again, I'll, I'll give you a reminder on Friday as well, but uh, the thing that I'll be due on Sunday is just that web project uh, topic assignment, okay? So the rest of the stuff you got a little bit of time on, um, got about a week and a half on the rest of those before those are done, All right? Okay, and then I will have, I'll get caught up on grading um, now that I'm feeling better and healthy. Um, so I'll uh, get all that stuff graded and put in uh, Canvas for you guys in the grade book so you can see where you're at um, since we're approaching the mid-semester. Okay. All righty, that's all I got today. Um, everybody keep safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you all on Friday. Bye.